Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crowdfunding Countdown. It's me, your friendly neighborhood, Chris George, and we're going to take a look at every single board game campaign finishing up in the week. We read through all of the rule books, and I try to highlight the mechanics and the differences and what I think looks unique and exciting and interesting, and hopefully that provides you a way of backing that isn't driven by other friendly neighborhood FOMO degenerates out there who want to exploit you. Sorry. No, not exploit. They saw exploit? Ah. We won't say exploit, at least not on that article. Better take a whole scrub through to erase your implicit biases that show the type of people you are. Let's get into the week, though. Before we do, shout out to all my newest patrons. Well, I don't have any this week, but that's okay. Shout out to Luke. Luke did a little one-time donation down below. Uh, and anybody who ends up doing that or jumping onto Patreon for like a couple bucks a month, uh, or just liking and subscribing and, you know, sharing videos amongst your friends. It's truly, truly appreciated. I love being able to hang out with you all and uh, check things out and exist in the board gaming space. And I, I appreciate you hanging out with me. So let's get into the week. And we're going to start. Well, I filmed a good chunk of it. And apparently my screen capture device wasn't working that well. So I'm going to go through in post and make sure I have some sort of visual aids, but apologies if the doesn't sync up exactly. We're just going to kind of scroll through so you can get a sense of what's on the campaign page, uh, and hopefully it'll link up with the examples. Pretty much I've been talking in generalities, and you don't really need specifics, and then I'll get a screenshot of all the, sh of all the shipping. But that's, uh, that's today's journey on filming from a different area. So yeah, at some point though, in our mellow, which I'm going to go back to, It'll sync back up with a huge one, Galactic Cruise. Galactic Cruise. I, I'm very excited to check this one out. I hope it's good. I know this one's probably going to take me a long time to parse through because I know it is very complicated. These are two new, new designers. I think it's a team of two. All I know is because I was talking to Jeremy Howard at the Level Up Gaming Retreat, and he was sort of demoing it and showcasing it and uh, really showing the prototype around. Uh, and I know he said he really loved it, and he said that these are people who consistently play test uh, Vital Lacerda's designs, and it was really giving me a similar vibe as well. So I'm excited to check it out uh, and see what this one is all about. I'm excited. I mean, I I, I don't see. I know this is going to be a complex game. I don't see how you can explain it in <laughs> in a short way. <laughs> So that video is about as good as you probably can get. Moving pieces around, going up tracks, learning a whole bucket of iconography. Maybe it's because I I don't own any Lacerdas. I, <laughs> I, I really am hopeful to be so blown away by this that I just want to get it instantly. But I also know that there aren't many people who would enjoy playing this with me that I play with on a regular basis. But I mean, what a great quote by the type of people who you're hoping to hit galactic cruise is a magnificent euro game the action selection system is unique and building the spaceships and sending them into space is incredibly fun thematic and rewarding vital cool 90 to 150 minutes let's look at this quick gameplay overview together shall we you're going to be acquiring new blueprints putting them into your shuttle so you're taking pieces and you're adding pieces to your shuttle your, shu your shuttle that will chain together to do stuff i assume interact with markets of resources and special agendas that means nothing to me right now build developments between departments to increase your action selection okay i guess there are different places on the board where you can action select even though i thought those different people were different they wanted different things i don't know schedule and advertise a cruise to attract the right guests you know if you want to know about advertising <laughs> i've got a i've got a couple ideas you should you should make sure uh it's a win-win for everybody probably good that's a good one to that's a good, that's a free one it's a freebie for you to use uh, launch a shuttle and reap the rewards. What are the rewards? Seems to be six. The rewards are six. Good. Uh, track your cruise's journey while gaining bonuses and unlocking upgrades. Great. More moving things around and accomplish the company's goals to outperform your opponents. Hey, I know those words, outperform and your opponents, and those are the things that I like to do. I'm sold. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to watch some videos too, but let's look at the rule book first, see how... How much we can get pulling out of here. 21 pages. Well, that's not bad. Well, it's 42. Okay. That makes sense. Build shuttles, satisfy our guests. Oh, it's that kind of cruise. But also help 
the company thrive by enhancing our company network, invent new technologies, and grow our workforce. Throughout the game, you and the other players will be placing workers to take actions that will enable you to construct shuttles, schedule cruises, build developments within the company's network. Each of these actions will help you to more efficiently accomplish your goal of launching shuttles to different destinations while trying to satisfy the desires of the guests. You will earn victory points for taking guests on cruise, as well as completing other company goals. Each time you launch or accomplish a company goal, a cube is added to the progress track. When the progress track is full, the end of the game is triggered. Okay, so a certain number of goals must be completed. Then that's the, the timer. Player with the most victory points wins and becomes CEO. And with it, just a whole bunch more work. The other people, they just get to retire in peace. But the CEO, then the Galactic Cruise... Everything is on your shoulders. Oh, this is a really good rulebook so far, though. It's very accessible. I think they realized that the, a too complicated a game can put people off. And having somebody, friendly Zoe, showing us around on the sections of the board, it really helps, really helps nail down the theme. I like that a lot. Oh, this is the progress board right here, This, uh, which has all the different colors. So you'll be racing to fulfill different supervisors desires i guess this is like your main action selection worker placement area in the center here this is where you can get your space shuttle parts and additional resources man i wish i had played this <laughs> so i didn't have to learn it right now <laughs> it's always easier to learn while doing i think and this is the player board i do like that these are developments that are going to be going on the board to amplify your actions i assume i, I haven't gotten to that part yet but I like that it limits your resources that you can gain. I can already see that that would, will feel nice. Okay, so it, it's, it's a worker placement, right? There's a lot more going on, but the bare bones of your turn structure is worker placement and then uh, escalating your, your ships a little bit more. Obviously, there's a lot more complexity to it, but I think that's, that's the first salient point to focus on to. It is a kind of worker placement, damn it. <laughs> Basically, you're going to take one of your workers and you're going to put it out and onto one of these spaces. These spaces will have two actions. Those actions will be mixed up every game unless you're playing an introductory game. And you have access to take two actions on your turn. Now you can take both of those actions of where you are, or you can also extend it to a spot where you have developments. So if you're extending it through your own developments, these little gears, those are the things that are on your player board. You can put those down. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. But if you're extending it through an opponent's gears, then you have to pay somebody else. Right, And so you can extend all the way through and do whatever actions you need to do, but they are going to cost you. You're also bumping out other people's workers. And you don't necessarily want to bump people out because then they go back to their player board. Whenever you hit back here, you get to take one of these special bonuses. So you get a little bit of a bonus getting bumped out. It kind of reminds me a bit of the gallerist. The gallerist, you have two spaces where you can go. There's a main space and then a secondary space. And if you're in the main space and you get pushed out, you get to do the secondary action. This feels more resource driven because of the example here, gain one money, gain one ad, gain one victory point, gain one resource, right? Bumping somebody back benefits them in a sort of smaller way than giving them one of the four main actions, but it still, it still exists. So that's the flow of your worker placement, choosing those actions. And then you can also launch a shuttle, which is on page 22, and we will get there. <laughs> oh yeah, I did mention, you're also getting reputation. This will make it less costly to use other people's developments to give you that freedom of choice. Each of the cruises, the little ships that you're going on have these sort of cards. They're attached to the top of your ship. They will be placed at, on this side of the board over here. These choose the, the amount of fuel that you'll need to tr drive through the galaxy and solar system and the planets where you will stop because everybody loves a different type of planet and those different types of planets will give you different rewards for going on them. Yeah, this ugh, this looks fun. This looks like something I I want to back and then would sit on my shelf forever. Like the best kind of fun. This looks like a game that I would love to ruin like people who are new to the board gaming hobby just ruin their day with. <laughs> I'm like, "No, we're going to learn this one. Galactic Cruise." <laughs> And then just make them never touch another board game ever again. That's what sort of sort of game this this looks like. Did you like the gallerist, Renee? It was fine. Yeah, it's a lot of iconography. Yeah, I'm I'm mid on the gallerist. I think it's okay. You're also going to be using your upgrade tokens that you've accrued over time, putting them on your ships. You don't need to know that. That's not relevant. It's just forward thinking. There's going to be a lot of forward thinking in this game as well. Let's look at the actions that you can do. Building and development, that makes sense. You're putting it out on the board, helping you get more connections. 
Hire an expert worker. These workers can do additional things. That seems simple. Gain supplies. Purchase resources or ads. Acquire blueprints. Blueprints will have specific requirements, what the type of people are who like to live in that section of your cockpit. These are things you're going to take. And then you also have to build them. Build shuttle segments so you basically flip the blueprint over and add them to your shuttle. These seem like very small cruises. You can take very few people on them. I would think that if we have the capability to go on a galactic cruise, you know, I'm thinking Enterprise style, but this isn't the Enterprise. This is that submarine that exploded. You can also get more shuttles when you are full up or you want to go on different, smaller trips more frequently. Gain resources. I think we already had gain resources, didn't we? Oh, no, gain supplies. Supplies are different because supplies give you ads, whereas resources give you more three resources from storage. So it's different. It's not a combo of gain supplies. Pay one money to gain two or pay one money to gain two. And it's from the supply because also the silo will run out. That makes sense. Refill silo. Refill one resource to the max and gain money and reputation. Okay, cool. I like that. The board loves your generosity. Then we have some marketing actions where you can schedule a cruise. Cool. You can only have one cruise scheduled at a time. You may not switch cruises once scheduled. Oh, you just choose what cruise you're going to take. Yeah, I already knew that. And that's when you gain your upgrade tokens that you get to use later on. So you want your cruises to be sort of diversified as each of your special endgame upgrades. You want to have three of each there. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I don't think it's relevant. Basically, again, forward thinking of what do you use when, which, which upgrades do you take now for the upgrade, and then is that going to pay off depending upon the actual cruise that you have chosen, or are they not going to link together? And so you're really going to have to think about those steps on steps on steps, right? And then finally, you can advertise for a cruise. The queue outside is not getting shorter. Everybody wants to go on the cruise. It's always full. You choose one cruise with one or two empty guest spaces and advertise for it. It's like a Kickstarter campaign. You just need to find the right people. Then you can get guests into your ship, essentially. Finally, we also have planning and strategy actions. This one lets you draw agenda cards. These are sometimes one-time things, either resources or abilities. Cool. I like abilities. So these are only good thing. They act as kind of wild resources if you use them for the resources or whatever uh, they do. They also supersede normal rules, which is great. You can also refill the agenda cards and you'll gain bonuses associated with the empty spaces in the display. Cool. But you don't get to... I really like this. This is a part that I really enjoy about this game that I think is exciting that I don't get from what they're pitching. I really like these little bits and ideas that the refill action benefits you in some way, but it also could benefit other people, right? And choosing how you refill resources when you know other people don't need them Right. And that timing I find is very exciting and very interesting. So that's pretty good. And then finally, we can launch a shuttle. You need to have your cruise scheduled because you need to be going somewhere. You need to have an available shuttle with one cabin because you need to take people there. You need to have access to resources to launch because you can't die in space. And you need to have guests pre sold or last minute sale to get people onto your ship. Oh, yeah, you actually need to have you need to have a shuttle. You need to have a spaceship to take people with you and you need to have guests. That seems like a pretty standard uh, checklist. I really like the theme on this. They re I, OK, I take it back. There are five steps of launching are listed on your player board. They represent a five second countdown starting at five and ending at zero. You have five seconds, five real life seconds to do all of these things. Five, assign and board. Everybody needs to get on the, the, the spaceship in one second flat. That's all the time that we've allotted for them. I'm sorry, Galactic Cruises are a quick business, people. We may not have a beam me up, Scotty, a transporter. It's just a transporter. No, you have to physically get on the ship in one second. I'm sorry, you agreed to the terms and conditions. That's what was there. If there's not enough room, if you've pre-sold a ticket, but you haven't built the shuttle to be large enough to hold your passengers, you lose some reputation as well. That's kind of fun. You take a progress cube and put it on the progress track. Oh, okay, so that's above the, the, other, the other spot. I, I think I misled a little bit at the beginning. You pay resources in order to launch. You throw the resources out the window. Again, one second flat. You score your cockpit. You have to launch every shuttle once because you have to have bought them and used them and actually used them. That's kind of cool. And then load up. Remove the upgrade token that was flipped when the cruise was scheduled. Place it onto the engine of the shuttle that's being launched. And then lift off. Okay, you can also call a meeting on your turn 
I, I'm assuming it works this way, that the benefit of being bumped back is that you can cycle your workers more effectively. And if you're not bumped back, then you have to call a meeting, right? You don't get to do additional actions. It says at the beginning of step two, if you don't have any workers in your break room, you must call a, a meeting. Step two was where you assign a worker, right? And if you can't assign a worker, then you can call a meeting. So you're either assigning a worker, you're launching a shuttle, or you're bringing your workers back. Yeah, I love that flow. I love that flow in holotype. Um, I really like bumping workers back. Cool. And then there's also company goals that you can accomplish. And uh, it just talks about the end of the game. That seems pretty simple, actually. There's a lot of iconography going out there. I mean, we just kind of scratched the surface. There's also two-player rules here, which you just have NPC workers that you can bump out and who can potentially bump you out, I guess. Yeah, whenever there's the sort of two-player rules that specified, or I guess it's, you use them in the solo mode as well. Um, I always, my personal idea is that you lean more towards the playing it with more people because you don't have to adjust. It feels potentially more what the designers intended. But uh, I also see benefits both ways. Okay, on to game number two. <laughs> only, only an hour? What do you mean? I was reading the rule book. The whole time? Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to read the rule books. Uh, all right. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. Yeah, but that one was complicated. Um, so we got 89 bucks for, well, not that complicated, actually, a little less complicated than I expected to. Uh, $89, which is a really nice price, I feel, for a big old chunky box filled with wood. I don't know how much, how many pieces it's going to be in there. I guess all the stuff is going to be in nice little chits. Then at 104, we've got with the advancements expansion and then or the accommodations expansion which is just to justify you getting both of them at the 119 price they haven't talked about do they have the expansion rule books no oh, no just a reference guide oh okay cool they just have all the different uh blueprints etc nice i like that they make that available too that's great see there's no reason not to make that sort of stuff available especially if people are playing it on tabletopia i need to reference you could also become the revered investor for 500 bucks this is the strategist chip theory game strategist but this is the first time that these people have created stuff and judging by its success you'll probably be getting a decent return on this investment unless of course you live in canada and have to pay for shipping for a bunch of games that you're not gonna gonna play um Wow, they had 30 of these, eh? Then you can be the esteemed shareholder, which is just people who were too slow to get the revered investor. And then you get a prototype of Galactic Cruise. I guess you get to play it before anybody else if that, you know, matters to you. And then you have the board of directors, where you get to have your name in the rulebook. Also, people who were too slow and wanted each future KKG game. I'm very glad that it ends with a G. It's a lot of cardboard, I guess, but doesn't seem that chunky ah here are the expansions okay advancements just a bunch more blueprint tile features premium linen finish on all boards and punch tokens advanced technologies advanced locations just a bunch of different tweaks to the game yeah that feels like just things that were removed in order to keep it a bit uh, cheaper a fair play to you uh and then we have accommodations where you have a bunch more blueprint tiles starting upgrade cards mm dang and a token removed from their launch tower jump starting their game providing asymmetry among the players in the very beginning yeah that's probably gonna be good you're right all right shipping is gonna be 15 bucks to the base game to the u.s 11 dollars to canada that can't be right it's lower to canada than it is to us that's that's wrong um i don't believe it <laughs> i genuinely don't believe it 13 so 11 makes it 100 even I mean, like, clearly it's subsidized, but I, I just want it back because it's subsidized. 130, easy. <laughs> easy math for me. Or be 114, or no, 119, so 130 US would be almost $200 Canadian. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be getting the additional expansions. I would want them. But the additional expansions are $30 more US, so that's like 40-something. I imagine there's going to be so much replayability in this type of game. I know you, you got to be really sure that this is your jam and that you're going to love it, love it, love it and play it so, so much to warrant 
getting the additional additional stuff. Although, of course, everybody but has gone for the deluxe bits and everything in because, well, that's the world we live in. Oh, fulfilled and shipped by all play. Okay, that makes sense. That's why they have good shipping networks and su subsidized shipping, $4. Shipping is currently subsidized by $4 on all rates. So does that mean, has this been updated? I don't know what that means. But I imagine that's what their little stretch goals are, is they just take off shipping. And God, I love that. <laughs> yeah, this one's a really tough one. It's a really tough one. It, it, I don't think I'm, I am allowed to get it. I think I would enjoy playing it for sure. But I think like th this is the type of game that I particularly resonate with. Uh, I, I like these chunky euros. But then again, like I, I was saying, or I may have cut it, but Renato and I were talking about the gallerist and I was like, I'm, I'm kind of mid on the gallerist, right? It's the only lister that I've played. But this gives me those vibes of that alternating decisions of action space. I don't know. It's it is a tough one. It looks like there are many many decisions to be constantly made, and I do like that a lot. But I'm also worried that I wouldn't get it to the table, and that the people who I play games with, I can see them bouncing off this because I don't have the specific group. But if you have the specific group of people who like these sorts of games, I think this would this will probably deliver on, on what it's saying. I mean, it's been getting a lot of good feedback. People have been enjoying it, and a decent price, too, so a really nice way to start off the week. If you're interested, that finishes Wednesday, April 3rd at 11 a.m. Moving along to something equally complicated, we have Knockout High, a fast-paced brawling game where your goal is to be the last student standing. 77 backers bringing you $8,000, almost $9,000. Spending an average of $112 US, this is almost as expensive as Galactic Era. Um, there must be some big things. 10 copies, one person at 340. 10 copies, three people at 420. This doesn't feel like real people who are backing those. It's a brawling game, last player standing. Six students from the class. You have abilities, a special focus attack. You choose an arena. One event deck, one item deck, one arena specific deck. You draw some cards, you play some random event. Yeah. This is potentially interesting. Before you're knocked out, you have the option of using a fatal blow, which will leave you in the game at one HP. If your fatal blow is unsuccessful, you can remain in the game as a school spirit. And so not, not that it's interesting that you can remain as a school spirit, but that there is this idea of in a player elimination game, in like a battle royale, the person who eliminates the player actually there's a detriment to that player. Like, if I'm going to kill you, you're going to do your fatal blow against me and potentially still be in the game, so why would I not just ally with you and take out somebody else, right? There's that kind of self-leveling mechanic that exists, but I mean, we're stretching here. $35. Shipping is around 10 so I... Oh, yeah, ships only do the US. I don't see it being that exciting, but if that really got you into a tizzy, well, that finishes Wednesday, April 3rd at 12.30 p.m. That one didn't take me hours to read uh and this one certainly won't either the shogun revised edition experienced one of the best rated classics of queen games designed by dirk hen well this i i do love queen games as we all know i really love queen games and how cheaply produced their stuff is and how cheap it isn't for their backers but don't worry you can get an upgrade kit for 58 dollars. or what's this revised edition and upgrade kit gives you 112 and then they take this opportunity again to sell you most of their collection i mean it's probably going to be gone by the time we look at it there's only four left out of 70 and they must be just selling their overstock so we're going to move on i <laughs> i think i've left i left all my sass on the kitchen floor over the last week i don't have any to spare on queen games so you know what <laughs> i give you honor queen games i honor you and your best rated classics and how how rated is your best rated game that's okay that's what we're going to check out 275 274 274 on board game geek that does sound best rated way to go queen games better than the entire steffenfeld city collection i suppose that's what you're telling me and i'll believe you i'll believe you Let's move along. Ah, oh, do we have anything good left? Yeah, we do. We do have we do have some things that are potentially interesting for the rest. Uh, I don't know if this one will be or not, but I've I've been tricked before. Love struck looked, you know, 
kind of fun. Uh, this one's called Swipe, a card game that's like online dating, but worse, a party game that challenges you to create hilarious and frightfully realistic profiles to catfish your friends. I know somewhere a family of bears is playing this game and laughing. Renee is saying that listening to me, listening to this video, she says it sounds like a sex party. Are we going to a swingers night? Are, are we? But, but are we? But. <laughs> Did you hear that pause after experiment? Tell me about it, Swipe. Oh, and it's got the same, the same font. The same font as Cards Against Humanity. I think we've got it. It's been a while, but we have ourselves here. That's right. Our next favorite funny card game. <laughs> oh. I can't wait to read some words and laugh. You create the best profile from what you've got. You're a thick, willing third Karen. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's good. That is, that is funny. What else is there? Goes all night. Daddy issues. I'm the less attractive one. Pro hot dog eater. I mean, come on. That's just impressive. Oh, it's probably a double entendre. I was, I was really thinking of that. I would just like to hang out with a pro hot dog eater because they're really cool. <laughs> they can eat hot dogs so fast. <laughs> just gulp those suckers down. Okay, let, we got to move on to something. Well, we're moving on to this. We're moving on to Robot Quest Arena Bot Battle. Man, we started out so strong and then Kickstarter is just like, reminder, here's what the, the bar is. <laughs> it's like, hey, remember Galactic Cruise was like really, you know, exciting? It doesn't have too far to, to go. <laughs> Doesn't have much competition, at least not in crowdfunding. But we do have Robot Quest Arena Bot Battle. The hit deck building arena battle game is back with four new robots, a larger arena, upgrade your bot, maneuver, and blast your opponents. This is has raised a ton, $510,000 US, which is very good. Uh, I, I remember this game for a couple reasons. One, because it's a competing rap with a video made by Kagan Productions. And so, of course, I had to, you know, step up and raise the bar. But two, because I thought it kind of looked fun. You just, it's like, uh, it's like Robot Wars. That's all it is. You throw your person down and you roll around and you try to be the last bot standing. It was a new one. It was a new rap. It was, you know, it's, it's, it was pretty fun. It was a pretty fun, good video. Um, I mean, I love the little art style. I love the minis on this. I'm going to need to refresh myself on the how to play. I do like that it's deck building. There's a big old market. You get five cards in hand. You play your cards for cool effects, gain energy, or to attack. Use your energy to move your robot or to buy powerful cards from the shop. I like the dual purpose of that. When you attack, remove your health cubes from your ro opponent's robot and add them to your victory point pile. Okay, so you just want to smash everybody as much as possible. When a robot loses its last, last health cube, take it off the board. It will respawn at full health on its next turn, so no one's ever out of the action. Oh, okay, so you're constantly being respawned. That's great. Player with the most victory points at the end of the game wins. Yeah. New player, 69. Or for the new bots, it's 89. So 22 for each character. I just, I think I just found it a bit expensive. But I normally find everything expensive. So, you know, <laughs> what can you do about that? Yeah, right? Like, it comes to $30 a bot in Canadian. The new player, yeah, it, it, it'll it hit over that $100 tier, right? 69 seems fine, but what's the shipping looking like? That's probably why I passed. Well, I don't see much wrong with it, though, you know? We're, although they... I don't know if they did have the rule book on this page, which is a bit annoying. But I remember it being not that complicated. Yeah, I mean, come on. $48 Canadian? That shipping is not subsidized whatsoever. Uh, that's ridiculous for moi that's like 170 dollars for this game there's no there's no world in which that's ever happening even at 20 us i don't think so why is there no rule book on the campaign page that's my question not one that control f can find but i think this has existed before it's possible to find it there's no reason why it shouldn't be on here but uh there you go it is a cute little one though i like the bots uh i i like that nobody is eliminated but you can still have the player elimination in this game i like that your movement is used to both buy things and move. And I find, I, I see that being an exciting balance. That's what I'd like about Attack on Titan is that your attack and buying power is, is the same resource. So I do like that as an idea. Um, yeah, it looks very cute. Just too expensive for my taste. But if you're interested in that finishes on the 4th of April, that's Thursday at 12 a.m. So basically Wednesday night. 
yeah, okay. I'll talk a little bit about this. I don't think this is going to fund. Um, I, I really don't. It, it's got $16,000 to raise and only six days to go. It's likely not to fund. But this is just a little tile laying game where you try to escape from prison and get a bunch of victory points while doing it. You have a handful of tiles. There's going to be a starting tile. And then you lay them down where they have to match. They have to connect both in terms of like a door has to connect to a door. Uh, and then also it has to kind of make sense in terms of the picture. That's how you can kind of get some points, I think. Um, I don't know. Mark Swanson, what did you design? Because you're he's been in my in, inbox, so I must have signed up for something. Nope, just feudum. I definitely didn't sign up for feudum, so I probably just got put on an email list. He's been saying, well, don't worry. I unlocked every stretch goal because stretch goals are, you know, they're made up. But the meeples look cute and the art does look cute. Makes sense that it's by Feudum. However, I think it's probably just too expensive for what it is. That's why people aren't biting. $40 for, you know, a bunch of tiles around the same count as Carcassonne, I'd assume. And then you have to pay for additional shipping. Right, shipping's 15 so it's 55 US for this thing. It just feels, uh, feels a bit too expensive based around, you know, the current fare of tile lang games that exist. But it doesn't seem bad. Um, you're going to be playing a tile, and then you're going to be discarding tiles to take additional abilities. So the balance of what you play and what you keep is potentially interesting. And then also having the race to get out. If you like the theme, if you like the art, you can check it out. Uh, again, I don't think it's going to back, but the emails worked. The emails worked. It got me to check it out. Uh, that will finish Thursday, April 4th at 9.59 a.m. Maybe. Or maybe it'll be canceled before this video airs. We shall see. If it is... And that's the last one that hasn't funded that I'll cover, I think. Uh, moving along, we're going to Super Club Rivals, the football manager board game. Yes, don't be confused by Football Manager, the, the game, or Eleven, which apparently wasn't good. I heard that it's not good, which is uh, really disappointing to me because I thought it looked fun. But this one is the Football Manager board game. Become a football manager. Dominate your rivals. A fast-paced action Packed head-to-head -head gem from the creators of Super Club. Well, I don't even know Super Club, so guess I'm just a dumb idiot. I mean, I'm hooked. He said very affordable, like twice or maybe even three times in the video. 25 euro. Okay, sure. 37 Canadian. We'll see what shipping's like, if that's very affordable. Two players play a total of nine matches against each other with an off-season, so transfer window, between each one. Whoever wins the final match is the champion. Oh, just the final match. It doesn't... It doesn't matter who wins the first eight. It just matters who wins the final match. Imagine the best striker in the world becoming available on deadline day, causing your opponent to rue spending all his funds upgrading his stadium. You select your team. You can be Bayern Barcelona. Leicester City. We're only going with Leicester City. There's no combo there. We see the blue foxes. Come on. Then just Barcelona. And then we've got, I don't know, Wrexham. Let's go with Huddersfield, even though Huddersfield is blue. Side note. How unbelievably outrageous is it that Leicester City is second now is second to Leeds with the start that they had and people were like oh yeah Leicester City's already won the championship after 14 games and then <laughs> now they're second I need a Vardy party that's all I'm saying anyway you got to prepare for the match I just got very sidetracked thinking about Leicester City you draft your squad you prepare for the match you can train earn invest scout bid or bid times three hmm I'll, I'll just bid times one. Every match has three battles. One goal per battle one. Step one happens only once. Okay, so the drafting only happens once. Then step two and three up to nine times or until there's a winner. Okay, if one manager is up more than three wins. That's pretty much it. You can dive deeper into the rules in the rules and reviews section. That's what I would like to do. If you love football, we bet you already know most of the Super Club rival rules. Test yourself below. The answers are written upside down just immediately like how can you not read that it's yes 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 can the goalkeeper play any any position on that doesn't make sense is 622 a legal formation on <laughs> rule book yes thank you because i want to know if you want to dive deeper into the rules you mean like if you want to tell me how any of the rules are played like any of the matches how the goals happen Oh, so you're basically just going to compare the three lines. Your forwards, your midfields, and your defenders. That's where you're going. That doesn't seem that exciting. That's cool. There'll be a different number of things that you do in between. You can upgrade your stadium, or you can save money for scouting some people. 
You have two actions total. Find the prices in the back of the investment tokens in the top left corner of the key staff card. And then in the transfer window, you can flip three player cards one by one from the main deck. You can bid to sign them, and then the highest bidder wins. I don't know if that requires you to take an action to bid on them, though. Seems a bit weird. And then the winter, collect the amount of training tokens. Immediately spend or save for next winter. You can upgrade them. Quick, cheap, guaranteed. Don't know what that means. Oh, I see. This is quick and guaranteed. This is cheap and guaranteed. And this is quick and cheap. So you might, you might, your training might work, but they might tear a hamstring. Oh, okay, so it's midfield versus midfield, attack versus defense, defense versus attack. I guess that makes a little bit more sense, but even still, you can have a legal formation, uh, 442, 244, who calls it a 244? A 244? Oof, only two defenders? You add up all your XP, and then you roll the dice, you add or subtract the result from your dice. Uh, so there's a little bit of a performance boost, so it's not completely determinable. I mean, if you just remember what people are in your heads, you can know mostly what 11 is being put out. Unless in the draft you'd take more than 11 people, but I didn't think that you did. Oh, seven core players and then seven. So you get 14 players, you have three substitutions. That makes sense. So you're trying to anticipate your opponents. Yeah, it seems all right. 25 euros, that's 37. Shipping is only five euro to the UK, Germany and Norway. 10 to 15 for the rest of Europe, and then 20 for Canada, right? So, no, it's a $60 game for me. Does not seem that interesting. But, like, if you live in the UK, I think that's where they're really trying to focus on. 30 euro for this thing? I don't know. I think if you're a football, a really big football fan, this might hit the mark. It, it very well could. I think if you're a big board gamer, I think you get bored pretty quickly. But, you know, not bad. I think it does what it sets out to do. Uh, and that finishes Thursday, April 4th at 1 p.m. Moving along to Mars Expedition, Soul 43, one to two player logic board game. Soul 43 is a logic board game played alone or in pairs. 43 missions full of difficult tasks and unexpected discoveries. All right, well, this this is, it makes sense. They say a logic board game, it's a Sudoku. It's an interactive Sudoku that well, they want to charge you $49 for. I mean, it's not Sudoku, but it's the, that similar style. My favorite part about the video is they said, listen, we now have innovative 3D figures to really bring you the immersion to your game. I'm like, oh, okay, so you have, you have pieces? You have pieces that we can move instead of moving things with our mind? Great. I also do love it's also 5 to 120 minutes for each soul. Uh, soul is a day on Mars, and you just have to navigate certain quests. It'll all be set up in a different way. You want to move and take the least amount of moves and be the most efficient. It does not look particularly interesting to me, unfortunately, but if that really gets you excited, well, check it out. That's Thursday, April 4th at 4.10 p.m. We're going to keep moving to this one. Armello, the board game, a strategic board game of heroes and high adventure based on the hit Video game. Mm, wait a second. All right. I don't think this was. I was just double checking my list. I think this one should be okay. So let's look into it. It's uh, raised a bunch of money. It's a first time campaign. So let's check it out. Ah, I think Armello was a video game. Armello comes to tabletop. That makes sense. The king, once Armello's wise and benevolent ruler, has fallen into madness. In response, Armello's great clans have called forth their heroes to claim the throne of Armello. And this is where you start your adventure, hero. Ah. That's probably the king falling to madness in the middle. That story reminds me a bit of, oh, there was one, there was one that looked good. It was on my, like, rememberings of the year. It was that one where, where darkness could consume you and you could then change your wind condition and there's this big tree in the middle. I forget what that one was called. I mean, it probably plays nothing like that, like that but uh, it will take you two to three hours. I've never played the video game, but I've heard it was good. Gain followers, discover power, full treasures to challenge the king in combat, and take his throne. Or seek the healing powers of the spirit stones and quest across the kingdom, facing perils and danger. The hit video game Ar Armello brought board game mechanics to video games. Now the story comes full circle. Cool, 79 US, plus shipping and tax, or the collector's edition, where you get a little castle to put your king on in the middle. Of course you want to pay $30 for that. Why have one Thane when you can have five Banes? Burn. Ooh. I'm Bane. Hello, Batman. Batman, you are. That was Bane, right? Christian Bale. Watch out. I'm pretty sure that was Bane. Climb my little pit of despair. Don't do it with a rope. You'll never get out. Get out. Get out. Float, 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 float. <laughs> I've turned into Pennywise instead of Yoda. 
I mean, sorry, Bane. I was Bane. I was Bane both times. All right, here's the gameplay features. A competitive game, open world. Your path to victory is different each game. Whichever path you take, you'll grow in power, compete for prestige, eventually allowing you to challenge the king or save the mic. You'll draw cards up to your wit score, move up to three hexes, play up to two action cards, roll and spend your partridge in a pear tree. Sorry, your armello dice. At the end of each turn, you can complete a quest, draw a new one, trade an experience to add experience cards to your hand, buy new cards from the market. Night and day cycle to shift the dynamics of play. Cool. The decisions you will make will be affected by your hero's preferred time, whether adventuring bravely through the darkness or exposed sunlight. After each player has taken their turn, dusk and nightfall will bring about a host of dangers. As terrifying veins erupt from the darkness, you stalk the victims. <laughs> classic Bane. Classic Bane. Bane? A classic? Am I? Your quests are basically go to a terrain and reveal the card. That seems pretty easy. It's uh, not even pick up and deliver. It's just deliver. Completed quests are tucked beneath your hero mat, reminding you of the prestige earned and the boost to your stats. I do like that. That seems very simple. Going around, choosing to go and boost up your stats or to go and fight some stuff. Spending gold in the market gets you shiny new cards. You control settlements. You just go there. Again, no pick up and deliver. It's just deliver. You can visit the market at the end of each turn to get cards and spells and stuff. Cool. Exploring dungeons, you just go there. A bit Kabula-like. You just roll some dice and hope that you beat whatever event is going to happen there. Then you can play two action cards each turn. Most cards are action or combat cards. At the start of your turn, you also roll your Armello dice. Those are kind of fun, and you get whatever it says. And some action will also have Armello powers. When you play such effects, you can spend Armello dice to activate these additional effects. So you save your dice, or you use them for their one-time abilities. You obviously want to combo them into your cards, but you may not roll the correct thing, so at least you get a bonus. And then finally, there's some combat. I like this gameplay section. Really uh, informative. I quite like this, actually. Rival heroes, guards, banes, and ultimately the king are all potential combat threats or threat or targets. Combat in, Ar in Armello is determined by rolling the dice, mitigated by card play. Number and hits and blocks scored by each combatant. Hits inflict damage, blocks cancel hits. Yep, seems pretty simple. So we get to 30 prestige and murder the king. Or when any player reaches 70 prestige, they win instantly. Rot has finally exhausted the king's life. And people crown the most renowned hero in the land. That seems like a very large difference. I worry that you're just going to be, like, smashing down your opponents as they head towards the king. And this literally might be king-making the board game. But the flow of it seems fine. It kind of reminds me a bit about Kabula, which I covered without the sort of outrageous characters. Is there is there a full rulebook? There is not. I don't mind it, though, because that was a pretty robust description, right? Most gameplay sections don't go into so much detail. I feel I feel very confident about the flow of the game because of that that written breakdown. So I'm I'm less upset that there isn't a rule book for me to to look through. Uh shipping 25 US, 40 Canadian to Canada. So for me, it'd be $150, right? 148 approximately. So we're back. Let's uh let's look at shipping. Hey, now you can see it. Now you can see it. Canada's 40. Um this would be about $150 for this game. You know, I think fans of the game will probably enjoy it. I think I would prefer that other one, The Darkest Dark, the, no, The Thinning Veil. No, that one is the one that didn't fun twice. Hey, I was close. The Darkest Doom. The Darkest Doom. That was the one that I think I would prefer rather than this one. But seems like it would be fun enough. Just seems a bit, a bit light and a bit meandering. Maybe I'm not a huge sandbox type of guy. But uh, yeah, if that description sounds interesting to you, I think it's a really nice description. Uh, check it out. That finishes Thursday, April 4th at 11 p.m. Let's move along to River Valley Glassworks, uh, a cozy game about cute critters collecting river glass. I've heard this one is quite good. I remember people were playing it at Level Up, uh, and they were like, oh, they really enjoyed it. This is from our favorite website, BoardGameTables.com. Sorry, I'll play. That joke's never going away, by the way. I'm speaking directly to the, the CEO of All Play, who I think commented on one of the videos being like, we bought the domain. You can't do that anymore. I'm like, well, that's what the Wayback Machine is for, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's check this one out because this one looked quite good. Uh, well, actually, I haven't looked at it at all. That's a complete lie. I've just believed the, the excitement of other people. 
So let's see if that excitement holds true for me as well. Uh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed yeah. with the ending of this yeah. video. Uh, where somebody, a dragon, okay. emerges What's from up? the depths what? and tries uh. to sell ri river glass and they haggle. And if there's no haggling that happens in this game, I'm going to be very, very upset. One drafting game for one to five players. Plan around the flowing river and place your glass strategically to win. Wow, Andrew Bosley getting top billing over the designers. We know what sells. Cute animals. First, you draft from the river. You add to your glass works. The river flows. Oh, that's kind of fun. Easy to push things down the river. If they get emptied, it flows down. That's cool. All right, let's let's keep going. Plays in 20 to 30 minutes. Cool. Kickstarter pricing. You get ah, Grizzly Old Bear Williams. Why you got to do this to me, I'll play? Is it because I keep the joke going? Is, is it because of that? I mean, one's a harmless little joke, and one is a representation of the monsters who still have kidnapped my entire family. Okay? Easter's coming up. Wait, Easter just happened. Do you know who I celebrated with? Yarn dolls. All sat around the table. And I spoke to them, and I asked them about their day, and it was a poor substitute for the real thing. Okay, I'll play. Enough is enough. This tete-a-tete -tete must end. I mean, it is a, it is a cool statue, though. It's wooden. A wooden first player statue. And it's a statue. It's not even a piece. I had to make an entire statue out of it. The Founders Edition has a Kickstarter exclusive box. And backers of the 89 tiers get a special all play medallion redeemable for a future all play tiny game. So I assume you're just spending an extra $50 to save yourself $20 down the line. Pretty good deal. You also get a free expansion, add asymmetric player power, scoring conditions included into every pledge. Yeah. Probably included into, you know, every every box. Ah, the river tiles are cardboard and then they're acrylic later on. Drawstring bag, nice and roomy. That's honestly a huge selling point. And then 132 acrylic river glass pieces. Okay, if you get a bunch of those pieces, I don't mind the 39 price. Glasswork board, probably not dual layered unless you get the deluxe. And then a couple extra tiles. I'll place answer to Azul. Yeah, deluxe just gets you river tiles, neoprene mat, Deluxe glass bag, because they made it deluxified. Dual layer board, dual layer ponds. Okay. <laughs> and these tiny little wooden meeples, that's pretty good. Might be worth the upsell. I don't know. How much of an upsell is it, though? It's $30 upsell, not just 20 Yeah. I don't think it's worth $70 for a very lightweight game. Plus, you're going to be... Well, you're not going to be paying that much shipping. Because, uh, wow, real glass pieces. They're shiny. They're heavy. They're the most premium and thematic upgrade we can make about River. River glass, 68 millimeters. I wouldn't call that a statue. I mean, I know it's not the size of the statue. It's how you display it for the world to see, but it seems a bit small to call it a statue. Oh, cool. Okay, to pull from the river, play a piece from your inventory into a river tile with the piece's matching shape icon. So the same shape. I guess they might be different colors. So maybe No, they're the same colors. Same shape, then pick up all the glass from an adjacent tile and put it into your spot. So you'll always want to get three for three, but you'll probably be matching up to stuff. Store the glass carefully in your shop. You can place it in any empty leftmost column unless another piece of that same color is already in your shop. In that case, stack above the previous piece. Yeah, you just, you're just stacking into, into columns, let's see. The river pushes the other glass forward, so it shifts things around, and then you draw new stuff. Whenever you'd like to refill your inventory, because your inventory is what allows you to place things into the river, back and forth, you can draw from the lake, and then fill in rows and columns to gain points. Only the two highest columns score with ties broken to the left. This is important, as columns to the right side of your shop score much higher. I see. Yeah, so kind of like Azul scoring, right? You want to score things on the right, because you're going to be pull it, putting them on the left, and so you're going to really want to stack things up. I'm still a bit confused as to the, the rules behind stacking things, but, but I'm sure they have some rules. Still a four-page rule book. I thought it might be more. Only shapes matter when placing and gathering, not color. Only colors matter when adding to your glasswork, not shapes. Yeah, so you just you just have to get one of every color and then get the colors that you got last. That's it, right? Like, that's the strategy? Scoring. Score all rows on how many spaces you filled from left to right without any gap. Okay, then you get the victory points on the highest columns because it's worth more when it's on the right. I, I just, I don't, I don't see, I, I think there must be something I'm missing because I don't see how this would be enjoyable. You just try to get one of every color and then you get the colors that you got last. 
I guess you can't always get those things because it's a big old race, 17 on your inventory track, and you don't want to set people up with different colors because you're deciding what you add in. So I guess that's where it is because everybody has the, the decisions to make of what they put into the center. That's how it that's how it can be interesting. I don't know. I mean, I've heard it's good. So I was expecting to really be blown away. And maybe it's something that you really have to play to to get to get a feel of. Seems like it could be pretty simple, though. I also like that you're getting this coin to redeem for this campaign. And I hope, <laughs> I really hope that it doesn't arrive in time for the campaign. Because I just think that would be very funny. Uh, there's also lore here as well. Lore, which is just completely overshadowed. It's not even in the title. They're just not marketing it whatsoever. But it does exist. Uh, Lure is a small box game. They hit 19 bucks. Right? All plays pricing is always 19 or 39. Uh, so let's see what Lure is. Wager and Catch Fish. You're also able to back Lure in the same campaign. Snappy dice rolling and bidding game where you'll secretly wager dice behind a player screen. All players reveal their dice simultaneously. If you bid less dice, you get to go first. But it's easier to catch more fish with more dice. Very Critter Kitchen. Play it risky to go early, be patient, and catch the big one. Don't forget to use your special dice and lure tokens. Most points from caught fish wins. That seems kind of fun. You roll your, you wager your dice behind your screen. You roll all your dice to hit the fish's target. If you don't, the next player gets a chance to catch it. So they must just flip it up. And then free with every backing of lure. The Deep Waters expansion. That was the show I was just in. This adds 15 new harder to catch fish. fish a new D4 dice to roll more precisely. Oh, so you're also benefited by being precise? Let's see. And do you like players who reveal the same number of dice roll at the same time? If they can both catch a fish, the lower gets it. If they're tied, no one gets it. It stays in the middle, and then the person who's later gets to catch it. So you draw three new fish. You put them in the middle. You roll the dice, and you place all fish you can catch in your face-down score pile. Aha! So if nobody catches, I can catch them all at once just by rolling 15. Because, oh, that was a 13. That's why we bumped it up to a 7, so we can get 13, 2... And you meet any requirements it has. Don't know what those requirements mean. I really wish you would tell me what the requirements are. I love that splash effects are listed on your screen, but they're not listed in the rule book. Thanks for that. I guess this requires you to roll two, three, or four square dice. And since they rolled uh, a d10, you can't catch that one. That's what I'm going to imagine it is. It's pretty simple. So I'm not that worried. But uh, I think Lure looks better than <laughs> River Valley Glassworks. <laughs> you know? I think Lure looks like a, a very quick, easy dice game. Uh, yeah, their shipping is always great. Four bucks to US, nine to Canada. Lure looks good. Good enough for me to pull the trigger? I don't know. But if I saw it at a convention, maybe. I think Mountain Goats is their real hit, right? Out of that small box style. But Lure looks pretty good. River Valley, I think I'd have to play it. And then, then when I played it, I'd go, oh, okay, this is cool. Or I think it was just fine. But I'm certainly not going to back something at an $89 level for something that could be just fine. No matter how much glass it has. Uh, that finishes Friday, April 5th at 11 a.m. Moving along to Super Boss Monster. Wow, it's raised so much. Way to go, Brotherwise. Uh, after a decade of dungeon building fun, Do Boss Monster is leveling up. Brand new mechanics, all new art, but 100% backwards compatible like every good video game should be. Cool, the super-powered dungeon-building card game. I've never played the original Boss Monster, so I don't know how this stacks up, but that feels more exciting than what I thought Boss Monster was. You get to draft cards at the beginning of every round from the town board. You get to command your minion. The new minion meeple allows your boss to command where they go into town, so I guess that used to be a different mechanic, but now you can choose. There are uh, spots, as long as they're not covered by heroes. And then you can lure heroes out of town to your dungeon and defeat them to collect their souls. That's very funny. The changes really help Boss Monster feel more robust and make the actual decisions you're making so much more interesting. Sweet. Yeah, that's kind of what it might seem to me. And $30? The thing about Brotherwise games is that I find their stuff is great. Like, they do Knight of the Ninja, which I really like. I just played Call to Adventure for the first time, and I thought that one was pretty slick. Like, very simple easy sits in the nice theme pocket so that was cool okay we're at shipping us 10 bucks so 40 dollars to get to you in the us for a neat little drafting game sure well i think it's neat i haven't seen the rule book yet 
and oh please be on here i hope i missed it come on how to play it's got to be here. on tts so how do you not have a rule book on the rule ah oh, this is disappointing like it seems pretty simple again i get a decent sense of out of it but especially when you say hey the changes that have happened and then you don't let people see the changes that have happened maybe it's an update faq i love that they have add faqs in an update and don't just add them to the section of faqs like well maybe that just happened today maybe it didn't happen. i will give grace but i like this reduced randomness of drawing cards i think you used to just draw a card and then like try to build it into your dungeon here actually having a draft feels good yeah that's disappointing like i was i like the price i like the shipping I like the potential improvements of drawing things out, but as somebody who doesn't know Boss Monster, I don't see why I should ever purchase this if you don't have a rule book on the page. I hope I just missed it. It has happened before. Uh, anyway, if you're interested in that, that finishes Friday, April 5th at 3 a.m. Bit disappointing for me. Uh, moving along, that's we've got Cascadia rolling. Just Cascadia rolling. Oh, rolling hills, rolling rivers, because there's two different types. Uh, a series of puzzly flip and write, roll and write games. 19 bucks each, I like that price. Uh, but let's see if they seem interesting. Yeah, I mean, seems kind of cute. Two small box games. Uh, I think the differences between these two are going to be very comparable. I think you would just need one of them, unless you really, really loved the system and wanted more maps. I like that there are four maps in each one. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and... Seems pretty simple. You roll four dice, everybody gets all of that stuff, and then you roll your own two unique dice, so at least you have a few more unique things. You're completing these objectives up here, uh, and they'll keep on moving through so you can potentially get additional bonuses, and then you're completing and circling things on your own map so that you can get points. That's it in a nutshell, essentially. It was a good video up top, really comprehensive. I like that a lot. Um, why get both? I am interested in this. You can play up to eight players. Sure. I guess you can't play up to eight players with just one because you need everybody needs their own personal dice. And then they have different dice, which will do different effects. Uh, I want to see if you do take all of the dice in the center, though. Collect wildlife. No, of course. There we go. Choose one wildlife type, type to collect and record them on your tally. My apologies. During your turn, you may also choose to take one of the dice actions to manipulate the results and take more animals. The central special die may provide additional bonuses. So this provides one, a discount to any dice actions each turn. Cool, I want to know what the dice actions are. You can complete a habitat card or you can just wait until it's at the correct spot. So you can get an additional bonus. And I kind of like that a lot too. I, I like that those are shifting, that you lay those out and those will always be random in terms of the bonuses that you can make and how those will interact with things. I saw this, uh, I didn't get to play it, but I saw it at, let's go with Rolling Rivers. Oh, no, no, let's go with Rolling Hills. Rolling Hills, much better. Even though it really does feel like Rivers is the is the OG, you know? Unique Deluxe Wooden Central Special Die. Gotcha. So there's the Central Special Die, which is different from the other dice. And that's why you can use its special ability. Gotcha. Yeah, you can take any three instead. You can count as this. Great. So it's just a special dice that creates a little bit of randomness. Cool. Uh, yeah, 19 bucks, though. 10 bucks for print play. But 19 for either copy? That feels really good. What's shipping like? We're offering a large discount off of our quoted shipping rates to all of our backers. We subsidize over $150,000 in backer shipping charges to help pitch in. And we're continuing that with that trend here. There we go. Say hi to the people. Renee will be happy. Artie's certainly not happy looking at Potato here. But now he's out of the shop. So what do we think, Potato? Shipping will be charged. What are the budget shipping costs? Nine bucks. 4.5 per copy. Get free shipping on the second game if you pledge for both. Okay, yeah, okay. Because they just bundle it together. Well, Potato seems a bit bored. He doesn't seem impressed. He, Yeah, he turned his back on your shipping. Potato knows that you're you're putting it in the same box and it's the box that cost the money to ship, and you're not really getting free shipping, you know? Tato knows, but we appreciate the subsidization. $14. So, you know, it really does make sense to just get both. It really does. Because, <laughs> you know, your shipping offsets it, and you could probably give one to a friend. Oh, and you can get both for 35 Yeah, that's pretty good. 48 Canadian, so it'd be like 30 bucks each after shipping. That's pretty good. I like that. I think it looks uh, solid. I like the that there are four different maps. I think that's really nice. Uh, and 
Yeah, that's great. Uh, that finishes Saturday, April 6th at 1 a.m. Moving along with something that hasn't funded yet, but it's 96%, so it's almost there. It's a deluxe wooden edition of the Fox Experiment. So if you were like, listen, I hate that, that this game, that's better than Wingspan, according to Mike Delisio, that had a bunch of plastic, well, now all tokens are, are and dice are made of wood. Wooden dice? He transferred. Cool. They decided, ah, yes, let's get environmentally friendly. Well, you know, after we've done the mass market because this is probably going to be a bit more expensive. $99 expensive, but that's with the expansion. The wooden dice kind of intrigued me, just from a, a feel perspective. Or you can get a wood upgrade kit for 34 bucks that's pledged 160 times, $50 Canadian. Fox Experiment Deluxe Wooden Edition is $100. Well, does that impress you, Potato? Does it impress you? What's the verdict? Just thinking about it. It bores him beyond belief, as it should with you. Just get the retail edition, Potato says. Uh, that finishes on the 6th at 1.59 a.m. That's also on Saturday. Fox Experiment is when you're going to roll dice to give your foxes new different traits. You get to name them. I like the idea of a wooden edition. I, I think it has proven that it had a realistic uh, funding goal, 50000 And hopefully the people that get it will enjoy it as much as they would like. Uh, moving along, we only have a couple left. Next up, we have Craft Wagon or Kraftwagen, probably, Age of Engineering and Dragon's Gold. Oh no, it's Kraftwagen, Age of Engineering, and Dragon's Gold. By renowned author, Matthias Kramer, Glenmore 2, Watergate, Cars and Races, okay, and by the legend, Bruno Fiduti's Dragon's Gold. Confused. That's what I am. Confused. Oh, it's uh, just because it's just been translated. Got it. Uh, so this one, this is a release, this is a re-release, first released in 2015, Kraft. Wagen is a game by Matthias Kramer, I'm assuming it's Matthias, not Matthias, that, that puts the players in charge of a company at the start of the automotive industry in Europe. Now with Kraft Wagen Age of Engineering, we travel to the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, and we will become part of the birth and development of the most important automotive industry in the world in the 20th century, the United States automotive industry. How to play. You choose an action tile from the action chain and place your gear. Oh, okay, so it's this sort of parks to kaido mechanic if you're last you get to jump ahead and choose whatever action you want then you perform the action as hire a worker and add it on the canteen of your company board okay build an engine and place it on one of your workshops build a car body place it on one of your workshops research technologies and improve your car parts your car parts get more efficient and then with a grand prix auction your racing car will advance a number of spaces equal to the power of its engine plus the size of your racing team, so you're trying to bolster that up. Recruit famous engineers, investors, gain instant benefits with the recruitment action. Attract buyers to the market, gain reputation points, and prepare to sell your cars. And once all the action tokens of the chosen action tile have been performed, so, so the wheel? Yeah, I think we just need to go to the rule book, because uh, it's, uh, it's not doing its job out there. Oh, I see. They were talking about multiple actions on an action tile, because as you go along, you have ones and twos and threes. So presumably everybody's going to take a one action, then everybody's going to take a two action, then everybody's going to take a three action. Maybe, or maybe some people will get stuck out of it. This one feels like there's only 11. Hi, buddy. How do you feel about Kraftwagen? Not even a second glance. Oof, tough crowd. Oh, okay. So so this this idea of placing a car on the market that we were covering, it it's just after every turn. Basically, after every turn, if you have a car, you can put it on the market. And then you can use that to help score and scoring the Grand Prix and racing in the Grand Prix. And all. Sure. What's Dragon's Gold like? The game. First released in 2001. Wow. Dragon's Gold is Bruno Fiduti at his best. Lots of interaction and fast-paced fun. Ah, yes. Bruno Fiduti's best. 2,591. <laughs> one, I like that this. Two variants of the game are available. One for cutthroat players. One for more strategic and less tense. Usually you would not overcome a dragon alone. Everybody would get their share of the dragon's gold. Will you profit for the opportunity? Okay, so there's going to be a bunch of dragons. There's going to be a bunch of gems that go on the dragons. You choose who to fight. All the players in the fight have one minute to split the treasure. Everyone must agree or the treasure is going to be lost forever. Ah, uh, everybody's going to be... I'm just going to be like, give me all the treasure. You can have somebody that says, give me all the treasure. No, give me all the treasure. No, nope. okay, nobody gets any treasure. It's, that's That's how you break the game. That's how you get not invited back to game night but it's also how you break the game unless there's something to stop it which i'll check for but yeah here are the negotiation rules must be specific you can't leave it to chance 
has to be distributed in its entirety. Agreements can involve anything other than distribution of treasure. No agreements about future distributions, card exchanges, or agreements about future plays. That just seems so boring. Oh, okay. At least there's some of this. Like, so if you have wizards, they get the magic objects. They can lay claim to the magic objects. Then you have rogues can steal gems from their rivals. And it happens whether or not it was successful. So if you have a rogue in the party, that's when you just tank the negotiation. If the negotiation was successful, place you obtain treasure and you recover the adventurers involved in the battle. Okay, so everybody is incentivized to make a successful negotiation. Strategic variant. So you just do it based upon numbers. Nah, I want people to fight. <laughs> I would want people to fight with this. But you could do it that way if, if you have people who suck. Or it's a cutthroat variant. Then you get points for sets. Got my own dragon. Got my own dragon right here. Um, Yeah, dragon's gold for 25 euro. I don't think so. There's something else for 25 euro that seemed better. Oh, yeah, the friggin' super club was 25 euro. No, I don't think I actually I take it back. I don't think either of them look good. 55 euro, 81 Canadian plus shipping. Wait a second. Wait a second. You're not, yeah. Yeah. You don't really like the potato hates shipping. You know, hate shipping so much. You hate shipping. Uh, cheap shipping though. Clearly subsidized. Canada 13. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. N neither of these games have made me want to jump up and tear my clothes off. So yeah, neither of them really seem that interesting, unfortunately. But uh, in case you were very excited they were returning, that finishes Saturday, April 6th at 6.59 p.m. And finally, we have Flaming Otters, a must-have card game in every home where strategy meets irresistibly cute otters. Hey, it worked for Exploding Kittens. Why isn't it working for us with Flaming Otters? It's the same box. Wouldn't people want Flaming Otters instead of Exploding Kittens? Come on, please. Please, just let me try. Uh, no. That's it. That's it for the week. Um, that is it for the week. Uh, every week I do a pick for me and a pick for you. The pick for me being the thing that I'm the most interested in. And the pick for you being the thing that I think if you got, you wouldn't regret. And this week kind of sucked. I mean, I don't really care about much. If I had to do a pick for me or a pick for you. Now, the pick for me is what was on my screen for the majority of my filming. It would be Galactic Cruise. I mean, I'm very intrigued by Galactic Cruise, but I think I'm not going to get it just because I don't have the people to play it with and I'm not really a solo gamer. But I think it looks kind of slick. Uh, there's going to be a lot of variability here. Could be the pick for you as well, right? It's kind of the only pick. There's another potential in Lure. River Valley doesn't, doesn't blow me away. I thought it would, but maybe it's one of those you have to play. Uh, but Lure, I think, looks fun as a little dice game. If you're in the U.S., shipping is always cheap. That might be a potential. Those are kind of the shout-outs, the only sort of shout-outs that I would think of. Honestly, the pick for me is my new hat. Uh, and the pick for you is to go check out the... Oh, pick for you. What, what's the pick? Uh, Artie, off the mouse. That's not the sort of mouse for a kitty. You good boy. Um, the pick for you is actually to go check out Gaia Project, the Gaia Project semifinal the grand semifinal of WSBG. It's been posted on, on Dice Tower. I did the commentary with 2022's Gaia Project winner, and uh, it was very exciting. It really made me want to play more Gaia Project. It was super fun and made me really appreciate the game. The four hours flew by, even though I think I was hunched over. <laughs> you can see potato in the background. Uh, I think I was hunched over, and I, I gave myself a tension headache, and my shoulders haven't recovered. Um, but it was it was fun. Go check that out. If you like Gaia Project. Yeah, no, nothing really exciting this week, unfortunately. But that's fine. You know, I think we always have to put it up against the other games that you could buy. Uh, I recently bought a copy of Grand Austria Hotel that I'm really excited about. Because I was buying some Ticket to Ride expansions for my folks. And I had to get free shipping, right? I just had to get free shipping. Shipped to a, a place where that I don't live. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just like so excited to play that. And, and when you compare all this stuff against what you could get at retail, really kind of pales in comparison. It does. The bar for crowdfunding may be down here, but the bar for board gaming needs to be up at this level, right? And, and we need, I need those constant reminders. And this is sort of a week that reminds me of that. Even as good as Galactic Cruise looks, if it were in a store right now, would I run out and buy it? No. Lure, would I run out and buy it? No. Do I buy a lot of stuff? No, I don't. I, I don't buy a lot of stuff. I'm very cheap, in case you haven't noticed. But still, it's that it's that idea, right? And I think that's that idea bears repeating. Foxes repeating. 
I believe what Fox is repeating. Uh, so that's it. That's it. That's it for the week. But let me know if you are excited about Galactic Cruise or anything else. Uh, a couple of things were raising a lot of money. Oh, Cascadia. You know what? Cascadia rolling, rolling rivers or rolling hills. I think a decent price potentially if you like rolling rights. Doesn't like super pull me in, but yeah, like I, I would rather you get Dinosaur Island Rar and right. I think that that's that's a really fun interactive role, right? And uh, I would much rather play that than play a new one, right? We have a lot of games on our shelves. We don't need to constantly back things on Kickstarter just for that dopamine hit. So anyway, but let me know if you got that dopamine hit. And if you did, I'm very excited for you as long as you're excited when it gets to your door. Uh, let me know in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. My name is Chris George. I don't have a catchphrase, but uh, well, I do have two kitties. Good one. Really, it was a good ending. Bye.